Welcome back, everybody, to Philosophy for the People. Finally, finally, we are continuing. Finally yeah, we're finally back with Aristotle. Uh, continuing our series with Aristotle's ethics. And I think we're still probably going to follow up and do the politics right after. Is that still the plan? I think so. Yeah, I mean, long-term project. I, well, maybe yeah. we'll have a timeout to do a couple essays by Kant we had talked about. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but those would be like, you know, one one episoders. But yeah, I think, you know, because Kant's come up for us a few times and uh, we haven't. Right. Haven't done, you know, and also, yeah, so what did we do? We did a we did a German dude for our, well, we did, we did a Greek dude, Plato. Then we did a German dude, Marcuse. Now we're doing a Greek dude. Then we should go back and do a German dude. We did. Uh, we slipped Leibniz in too. Remember? We slipped Leib German dude. I know, another German dude. <laughs> right. Slipped in a German dude. The, the Greeks right. and the Germans. All right. So yeah, yeah. this is the theme. Very good. All right. So um, we're on book Which six. According to the Germans are the only two civilizations, but that, that <laughs> sort of talk has gotten them into trouble. So for, an, for, another, for another episode, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, so we're on book six, uh, but it has been a while. It's been at least been a, a bit. Couple, it's been a couple of weeks since um, we've uh, spent months, some time with, with old Aristotle. Yeah. So why don't you catch us up to... Uh, just give us a little recap. What, what, what should we keep in fresh in our mind as we yeah. enter this uh, next section here? Well, and actually, the, the, this will this will be important when we get into six. Um, so let, let's actually let's, let's think of the the big picture. What Aristotle would call the architectonic of the book, right? Mm -hmm. So we've we've talked in the past how you know the poly, or excuse me the ethics is really the first volume of a two volume set, really the first semester of a two semester course, ultimately leading to the politics. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, what's he doing here is, you know, what, what, what politics is the science in some broad sense of science. It's the study. Uh, because the word science after book six of the ethics is no longer innocent to us, right? It's, it's, yeah. it, there's many senses of it, right? Mm -hmm. But politics is the study um, that, uh, you know, manages the good life of the city, okay? But in order to do that, we have to know the good life for the human being as such okay and so we know what we're trying to secure so then what, what do we do we start out with the ethics which is the study of the good life for the human being as such okay and you know famously aristotle comes to the conclusion that you know the the good life for the human being as such would be the life living lived according to the virtues of reason mm -hmm. okay but then uh he you know he points out this is all book one that there are two types of reason and thereby two types of virtue Right. Mm -hmm. uh, there's ver there's reason, uh, as he says, the part of the soul. And of course, we have to be careful with part talk with souls in Aristotle, but that's for another day. That's for day animal. Um, it's re there's reason that of the part of the soul that is itself directly rational. OK, mm -hmm. what and he calls that depending on your translation, theoretical reason or scientific reason sometimes. Uh, and then there's the then there's the part of the soul that is not directly rational, but is obedient to reason. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, he'll call he'll call that practical reason or um, sometimes ethical reason or uh, or moral reason. I don't like moral there, but I think that it's anyway, but, yeah. Uh, and and so um, what we then after that we get a discussion in book two of what is what is moral or ethical or practical virtue. Okay, um, and then in book three we get a discussion of under what conditions is one responsible for their state of ethical virtue, practical virtue. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then book four, we get a discussion of the various different vir lesser virtues, uh, uh, all, all of the ethical type. Okay. Book five, we get, a, we get a, a focused discussion on one of the cardinal virtues, which is justice. Okay. And now uh, in book six, which is where we're at, right? Yes. Um, we get now we we move it's interesting so it's been all practical virtue mm -hmm. and now in book six we get virtue of in the reeves translation of thought or theoretical virtue or virtues of reason as yes. such okay mm -hmm. so basically what we've been looking at in those sort of first few books you know three four five or uh ways to be good right mm -hmm. and now we're looking at ways to be smart Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting though, it's it's a it's a weird interruption though. If you look at the like the table of contents, so you get book five is justice, mm -hmm. uh, uh, practical virtue, okay, ethical virtue. Book six, we get virtue of thought, right? And then in um, book seven, we go back to lack or in the Reeves translation, lack of self control and pleasure, which would be 
uh, it's really a book on the virtue of temperance, okay, yes. which is a practical virtue. So there's a, this is kind of a question of why is he, why is Aristotle doing this, right? Mm -hmm. We get a practical virtue, one of the cardinal practical virtues, and then we get uh, a, a br relatively brief discussion of of a virtue of thought or theoretical virtue, mm -hmm. and then we go back to the, the one of the cardinal practical virtues. Okay, so why is that? Okay, well because. Um, in his discussion of temperance and intemperance or continence and incontinence in book seven, he needs to address these puzzles that, that Socrates is going to raise about, well, how is it possible for us to do something that in some sense we know to be wrong? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like what is, what is, how is it that we can uh, have knowingly do the wrong thing or even for like for a Christian, like how is sin possible? Like how can yeah. you know, knowingly do something self-destructive? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, it's, in order for him to, to have that discussion, he's got to have uh, in place what is it to know, right? What is it to have theoretical wisdom about what to do? Yes, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, the discussion of virtues of thought in I'm sorry, it's a long winded thing to get around. No, to. this is yeah, this is yeah. really good. Keep going. Mm -hmm. um, so, the discussion of virtues of thought in book six. He goes through, you know, so he, what we're going to see is going to say, well, I guess we're seeing it now. I'm not going to see it. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's what he, what in our, my translation, Reeves translation, not mine, Reeves yeah. I'm using. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't translate. Um, I don't translate well. Um, Reeves, you know, says there's scientific wisdom, there's craft wisdom, craft yep. knowledge, and then there's practical wisdom. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we go through scientific and practical rather quickly, and then mm -hmm. we get a, a more focused discussion on uh, scientific and craft. And craft, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we get a more focused discussion on practical because he's given us two books, right, in the analytics on on theoretical wisdom. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, he's given us, you know, and even you could like think of the categories and you know, like all the organon is his great treatises yeah. on on scientific, scientific wisdom. wisdom okay right. yeah and it's various forms and stuff like mm -hmm. that okay but um it's important to note though where we're going with this in um in into the next book and like this this ties in with our discussions of plato and socrates from the republic mm -hmm. is it, one of the things that's distinctive about aristotle is at least for socrates um although i think it's different when you start to read plato in the republic but at least for socrates there is not a distinct sense of practical wisdom distinct from theoretical wisdom okay mm -hmm. from virtue of thought okay um and because if you think of it uh th this is this is one of the look, every time socrates raises a question right he always wants an absolute demonstration for an answer he wants a definition that we can then deduce an answer from right yeah. and we're looking for the form of the thing okay mm -hmm. so th th looking at uh book six here so what is scientific wisdom it's a combination of understanding in the mm -hmm. translation that I'm reading, which is, I believe, a translation of noose, okay, and uh, and then and then drawing consequences from understanding, okay. Yes. So it's it's deductive. So right. what is scientific wisdom? It is the ability to know first principles, okay, mm -hmm. and to draw the proper deductions from them, right, and okay. to work out its its entailments, right? Its entailments, yeah. Okay, so what are first principles? They are things that we know, and I'm gonna use this word. Uh, though we moderns are going to screw this word up, we know inductively, okay, mm -hmm. uh, which just Aristotle means that we have just by a fundamental confrontation with, you know, with with nature, right? Uh, with running into being, we are impressed with noose, right? And, yeah, you know, his, his ability we get, to we get the general understanding from the particular instances. Yeah, we get a, Aristotle. yeah, we just, and he, yeah, he, and he doesn't have, no one, let's face it, has a terribly good account of how this works, but clearly right. we do it, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we begin with these first principles and we're able to then to deduce further consequences from them. That's science for Aristotle, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, and think of it, um, all of Socrates' puzzles are, well, it seems like we don't have science about justice, right? We don't have science about temperance. We don't have science about piety. We don't have science about, we don't have science about, in Aristotle's sense, okay? Mm -hmm. And I think so we're get, we're starting to get a reply to Socrates in this book here, yeah. okay? Because he's mm -hmm. saying, well, wait, whoa, whoa, okay, you're, yeah, you're right, you're right, Socrates. We don't have science about justice. We don't have science about piety. We don't have science about temperance. We don't have science, you know, about generosity all the other virtues we don't have science he's agreeing with you okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but we do have practical wisdom about him right yeah okay and so so there's a continuum here so you've got uh scientific knowledge scientific uh, the, the or or theoretical virtue what is that well that is having understanding 
of the first principles of things that are that are always and necessarily true. Okay, yes. so we begin with news, we begin with absolute necessities, according to Aristotle. Okay, and then we infallibly can, if we're good, we can then deduce the right consequences from that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now look at craft. What is craft knowledge? What are the virtues of having a craft? Well, first of all, the the craftsperson is always dealing with things that are subject to variation. Okay, if I'm if I'm building a cabinet, I'm told out of pine, right, uh, as opposed to maple, I got to do different stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. I have to vary myself. And and even if the pine came from a certain forest where, you know, the, the wood tends to be, I don't know, maybe more more hydrated than other forests. Right. That's going to make a difference. And, you know, maybe this batch of pine is weird. Right. And and all these all these variables are going to come into this. Right. And and so there isn't an absolute unvariable first principle of any one craft. Yeah. Right. The craftsperson has to sort of just be able to know it when he or she sees it right mm -hmm. and then do the right things based on long experience with this okay yes so what is what is craft knowledge it is it is or you know what is craft wisdom it is the ability to make those judgments about about the principles of things that are subject to variation with an eye to production mm -hmm. okay do you see that so it's making stuff Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you think of it, uh, the, and you can go back to book one of the metaphysics. There's a very good discussion of this there too. The craftsperson knows causes of things in the sense of moving causes. Like, what do I have to do to matter, right? To bring about the production that I want to come from the matter. Yes. You see right. that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so you can see how it's different from science, though, because there's there's a kind of fallibility to the craftsperson that you don't have in the scientist. And a kind stuff. of contingency, right. A mm -hmm. kind of contingency. Yeah, exactly. Because and it's and it, and Aristotle is really big on this is to point out it's not because there's some flaw in the craftsperson. Mm -hmm. It's because the material, right, the subject matter of the craftsperson is inherently subject to contingency and variation and in these sorts of things right mm -hmm. uh and so the in the way that you know the geometer can guarantee you an outcome the craftsperson cannot right there's right. a probability to this right mm -hmm. it could be there's some something wrong with the wood that i just couldn't have known and, and it falls apart yeah okay all right so there's a precariousness to it. like the, the craftsperson is subject to tragedy he can do all the right things and the house could fall down and my right? yes and my guitar okay. string can still break right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay now uh so what is what is practical wisdom Practical wisdom is the kind of wisdom that one has in dealing with principles that are subject to variation. Okay. Uh, but I'm not concerned in this case with production. I'm concerned with living well, with action, mm -hmm. Aristotle calls it. Not production, but action. Okay. Mm -hmm. And where action is a is a term of art for Aristotle, because you think of like building things as a kind of action. Like what what is an action? It's doing things of intrinsic worth, right? Mm -hmm. Not just for not production, right? but for the sake of living well, like, yes. okay. So, so what is the practically wise person? It's the person who knows what should be done in order to live in a way that is intrinsically worthwhile to do the things that are intrinsically worthwhile. Okay. So it's not productivity, it's action in that specifically Greek aristocratic sense. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now no, you could be practically wise and not pull it off. Right. Like you okay. could, and this is going to be important when we get in, into the next chapter or next book and discuss his confrontation with Socrates. Mm -hmm. The probably wise person might know what to do, but yet not have the other virtues to pull it off. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Uh, so what is, what is practical wisdom? It's the knowing part. It's the epistemic state necessary for living well. What is that? It's to know the goods that are intrinsically worthwhile, that are mm -hmm. not just productively mm -hmm. valuable. Okay. Right. Uh, and then we get discussions in this book about deliberation and like what what is what is the practically wise person there? There's someone who's able to deliberate, meaning when there is a question of what the good is that we ought to pursue in a certain situation, the practically wise person is the skillful person at resolving that question. Yes. OK. Mm -hmm. Right. The, and so you can think of it is what is the practically wise person it is someone who has entered into the space of reasons with respect to the good life. Right. Mm -hmm that knows what are good or not good reasons, right? Justifying ways of life, right? Activity, uh, and it can thereby exercise reason in that way. 
Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So that's that's the thirty thousand foot view. That, of, you just nailed it, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you clearly, clearly, Doctor Jim has taught this before. I've taught this huh? sucker before. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I yeah, don't sorry. even. I don't even know what to add to that, man. I kind of went. Great, I kind of went like great like super villain yet. monologue there on you. <laughs> no, dude. Yeah. Hey, man, save me work. I'm. This has mm -hmm. been so, so. I think we kind of switch a little bit. You know, like. You, your semester just ended and I felt like mine just picked up because I just got like a million different projects just landed yeah. on my lap like this last week. So I've been, I've been crushed and tired yeah. for like the past two weeks. So no, well, thank yeah, you. I don't, thank I don't you have to walk a shot County fair to worry about, man. You know what? <laughs> the, the people can, can laugh and they can snicker, but getting down a, a three hour set list for the Waukesha County fair is it's no three small hours. task. It's, dude. Three it's a three, hours. we got a three hour set, man. It's like dude, 60 that's like, songs. That's like, I have to sit here and learn on the guitar most of which i've never played before so I'm, that's I'm like a my grateful ass. dead show man right it's, <laughs> it's like, i would have to like tell jokes between songs just to yeah. fill time <laughs> just, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what i'm gonna do man it's like and they're not it's easy like the grateful dead it's like day three at the Automont speedway right <laughs> right like <laughs> my, i'm assuming you know more about the waukesha county fair than i do just like you know more about book six of aristotle than i do because <laughs> you've you've had the yeah. lived experience, yeah, the experience um i'm assuming there's gonna be like raffles and stuff going on between so hopefully it's not like a straight three hour set you know yeah, what exactly. i mean but but exactly. that's what we're that's what we're prepping for so yeah aside from the, the otherwise two, by the end you'll be like elvis you know when they'd have to like carry him off the stage in the 70s <laughs> you know they'd put the cape on him and carry him off right you know yeah and not to get you know too distracted but i i, I did i did just hand in the manuscript with gavin so one book is done excellent excellent i've got, I've got the second book i'm working on now and all these other projects but no dude like no joke it's the music projects that are crushing me right now man because yeah. it's not like these are we got like extreme and van halen and uh, uh, guns and roses all these guitar heavy tunes that are just like dang yeah. so it's it's the craft so it's the craft it's the craft yeah you're working your craft knowledge yeah. so can i may i go to a passage uh that i think like let, let us read from let's let us read it's from the man himself, and so yeah. and so I, I gave you like the thirty thousand foot view right mm -hmm. And I think there, there's just this is an issue I find interesting. So it's in the last chapter of the book. Um, and so what am I looking at here? I'm looking at this would be 145 A or pardon me, 1145 A 25 is where it's gonna start. Okay. 26. I'll, I'll try and this is the one I'm using. So we we've got different sure. um translations here, but go ahead and start reading. I'll try and so yeah, so right around 1145A, 25, 26. We, however, should go a little further, for it is not the state that is only in accord with correct reason that is virtue, but the one that also involves the correct reason. And correct reason about such matters is practical wisdom. Socrates then thought that the virtues were cases of reason, all being cases of scientific knowledge, Whereas we think that they involve reason. Okay, so this is interesting. All right, um, and and it's foreshadowing. The debate's going to come up, so I don't want to get too much into the debate with Socrates. But there's an interesting point here. So what he's saying is, is what it is to have practical reason is to be able to act because an action is the good action to do. Mm -hmm. It's not merely to do the good action. It's to be. It's to have the capacity to act because of the good. Right. Mm -hmm. You see, that? which means you have to know what the good is and then 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 know the connection between this action and the good. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, there's a really interesting debate now, I think. Does that mean like I mean, obviously, it, I don't think Aristotle can say that means that I actually psychologically go through that process mm -hmm. right, in every action. Like I'm like 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 like, you know, um, you know, when one of your children cries and you pick it up, pick her up or him up or pick it up. Sorry, it was terrible. When you pick up when you, when you pick up your child, right, in, in response to the crying, uh, it's not as if you're like there's an ethical syllogism going on. Well, there's two goods. I could practice my guitar or I could leave you right. know, Marin, you know, to bleed to death, right? Um it, so it doesn't mean the deliberation. I think actually had a. I actually had that slight situation yesterday. Roan really? Roan flew off the swing. Nice. <laughs> and nice. I had to go to band practice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So of course I checked him out first, and you know delayed yeah. that. And yeah, had Roan's, a friend. A, Roan, Roan's a tough kid though. So. Yeah, dude, yeah. the swing snapped, man. Yeah. So it was like a pretty nasty fall. Um, you know, mm -hmm. really, if you think of it, a swing set 
and I'm pro swing set, but it's about the yeah. most dangerous damn thing you could turn a kid loose on. <laughs> and this, the one we have out here just came with a house and like the dude built it. And like when we first moved in, I'm like, that thing's going to hurt one of our children. Yeah. Fi finally happened. He's good though. He's tough. We, we, He's... we had a, we had a, a prefab swing set yeah. that we bought from Walmart. Like when our kids were really little and that thing, that thing went like, like 13 years. But I remember yeah. the day it collapsed. The whole thing just eventually came down in, in a, a smoky mess. But anyway, yeah, this is, this is it for us. I mean, the, the, yeah. the swing literally uh, snapped. And so yeah. he just, he just, just was catapulted. Sure. Right. <laughs> the boy's okay though. He's fine. His he's wrist fine. is, you know, a little swollen, but he's, he's all right. Good. Yeah. So, but anyway, and so um, it doesn't necessarily mean that I have to self-consciously go through the deliberative process. Okay. But I do believe Aristotle's saying is you could, you could go through the deliberative process. Like you yeah. could provide the reasons, right? Right. Yep. Uh, for me, it's a fascinating question. Like, but how, how long after the fact must I be able to, to provide the reasons? Like I, I have a view that where it might be years after the fact before you're really able to understand your actions. Okay. But it does seem though, and not, it seems it's clear for Aristotle is for the practically wise person mm -hmm. reasons are like constitutive or explanatorily internally related to their actions. Yeah. So right. let's 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 tie it back to the music analogy because this might yeah. be interesting, right? Or even jujitsu. So yeah. I mean it seems like what's being discussed here is a sort of tacit knowledge, right? Yes. Sort of tacit yes. moral knowledge. Yes. Which is which is a real form of knowing. In fact, at in some instances we might even say it's the highest. Yes. Like level like this is this is you think of the musician or the or the martial artist who's just in flow right yep. Yep. they're not they're not really thinking about it explicitly but they yep. have such a command right yep. that you that like they're beyond you know and sometimes you have this the this breakdown of, of skills in terms of what are the four ones again you have um unconscious incompetence conscious incompetence uh conscious competence and then unconscious competence and that's right? when you're just gone right you yeah and it's not that like the, the last level is you don't know what you're doing. No, it's you know it so well that you don't yeah. have to like explicitly be thinking about it as you're doing it, which would slow you down and actually make you a bit. It would it would it would it would make it it would encumber you and delay right. you in certain respects. Right. right. Do you think that's a connection here? I think that's good. So it's interesting. So, OK, clearly and and uh, this this like can get you into the. Uh, the, the great debate between like Herbert Dreyfus and, and John McDowell. Right. Yeah. But okay. So we have to remember though, like craft knowledge and practical wisdom are not science. Okay. So ultimately the first principles of craft knowledge and practical wisdom cannot be stated in a neat species genus definition of the sort Aristotle recognizes as noose, right. As understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it seems that the, practically wise person or the or the wise crafts person can know why they're doing what they're doing but it doesn't mean it's statable it's articulable mm -hmm. right so i think sometimes it's it's thought well no like like after the fact a good jiu-jitsu player can explain to someone else every move that he or she made and why it was the right thing i don't think that's aristotle's view right and i don't think you could like explain every move you made uh as to like why you did it when playing guitar masterfully mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean, though, that you did not have reasons for that and that you yeah. didn't understand them. Like I think Aristotle was saying is there are different types of grasp, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's different holds on reality, right? One is science, right? Yes. Is, 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 is episteme, right? Nice tie in um, with holds in jujitsu. I like Yeah, that. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> on the window, other different ways of choking reality. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, but then another way is craft and another way is, is practical wisdom and, mm -hmm. And there are different types of grasping or holding reality. And I think this is an important thing in like seeing like not seeing like sort of false dichotomies, right? In that just because the practically wise person could not state to someone external uh, why that was the right thing to do doesn't mean that person is not in direct contact with those reasons. Okay? Right. And don't think that we should reduce all forms of knowing to this one form. Of exactly. Knowing. And this right. is That's important. Critical, this is an yeah. important theme in the Nicomian ethics that throughout, because he, he comes out and says in book one, he says, look, um, he says, uh, how rigorous should the study of ethics be or political science be? He says, as rigorous as is appropriate to the material. And we don't hold the carpenter to the same type, same type of rigor as we do the geometer, right? We, we hold them to the same, like, 
sense of like we 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 ask them to both be perfectly rigorous, but perfectly rigorous given their subject matter. Yes, or, or right. Yeah. But this is important. So so if I suppose I am practically wise, okay, does that mean um, I can explain and justify all of my determinations to somebody who is him or herself not practically wise? It does not mean I can, right? Okay, uh, where it's different, like say geometry in Aristotle's view, in, in, in episteme, we sit you down, we take you to the board, we can do the proofs, and any rational animal will be, will, will be able to do that, mm -hmm, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, contemporary educational systems notwithstanding. Um, but uh, it's not the case that you can just sit down any rational animal and go to the blackboard or the whiteboard and and give them the proofs that will show them why what you did was the correct thing to do, right? And so it, it, this is important, though, because, like, so many of our arguments from relativism, for relativism now, or, or subjectivism, I should say, yep, um, are based on this notion, well, it's just not apparent to everyone right? That this or that is the right thing to do. Right. Right. Uh -huh. And Aristotle looks at that and says, I know, right? Because a lot of people are not practically wise. Yeah. They're so brutes. They're brutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're Philistines, right? That's, okay. my, that's, my, that's my daughter, Marin's favorite thing, calling things brutes now. Brutes, he, yeah. So but do, among, <laughs> yeah, but do, do you see that right? Is that is that he, like, like practical? Oh, uh, yeah, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's right. A kind mm -hmm. of achievement. And uh, there's a sort of there's a sort of epistemic privilege that comes with being practically wise. Once the achievement is achieved, yeah. Once the mm -hmm. achievement is achieved, right? And so I think in a lot of ways that because certain claims are not apparent to all minimally rational beings, we assume thereby they are subjective, right? And Aristotle would say, no way, not at all. Yeah, like yeah, there could be yeah. <laughs> inarticulables to someone who does not have the proper intellectual right, virtue. Right, because you yeah. just a, you just a brute. You're brute. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that's good, but that, and that's so true, I think, of music, of jujitsu, of aesthetics, right? I mean, we really think, I mean, everyone these days, it's like kind of popular to think that all aesthetics is relative, but we really, we really don't believe that. Like, we think yeah. most of us like have improved our aesthetic sense as we've yeah. gotten earlier. Yeah. Like, we really think, like, no, like, even with music, like, I appreciate better music now than I did when I was eight years old, yeah, right? Totally. Because there there is an objective scale here. Yeah. But if you but ask me to explain it to an eight-year-old, I can't. I can't do it. I can't yeah. do it, right? Um, yeah. Same thing with the ability to perform uh, yeah. music and explain why what I did, if it was the right thing, why it's the right thing. Yeah, I mean, that's Aristotle's right here. And like, what a mistake it is epistemologically and otherwise to try and reduce all forms of knowing to one form of knowing, right? Yes. Whether, it's, whether it's a scientific form or just rational demonstrations or yeah. whatever it's it, it, yes. knowing is like being it comes in many different ways there's the principle yeah. of analogy again right mm -hmm. and you know a fascinating place this can go is if you get into uh john henry newman's the grammar of ascent mm -hmm. okay because he brings up this notion of what he calls an illative sense and he's basing it on aristotle's notion of practical reason okay and and this is this is an I mean it, I mean, and he's pushing make, back against these Lockean trends, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, although he's got like a great admiration. Right? He calls Locke like one of the greatest philosophers in that book, but that could have been a political thing too. But anyway, but um, leave that aside. All right, what he's doing is he's saying, look, in the same way that Aristotle says there's a kind of non-demonstrative wisdom that we just expect, you know, in in Newman's case, a decent, you know, uh you know, Oxbridge gent to be able to exercise, even though it would not be available to the average commoner, right? Okay. Um, Newman's going to say there's also a kind of practical judgment about uh, inductive argument, right? That, that that there's a certain, there's, there's a kind of non like scientific de demonstrative knowing, right? Mm -hmm. That just comes with a sense of the real, Right. Yes. That's acquired through a long life of making judgments. OK, so mm -hmm. so it's interesting. Like Newman wants to extend Aristotle's um, notion of practical virtue into like more what we see is like like traditionally epistemic realms. Right. Mm -hmm. and this is where you get this whole notion like later on uh, when I don't say from Newman, but it's the same idea of virtue epistemology as opposed to deontological epistemology. Right? Yes. Yeah. So that, whereas like like scientific was in Aristotle would be like a kind of a deontological affair. Right. Mm -hmm. Where. uh 
and um, obviously the practical wisdom is a virtue affair. Well, like people like Newman see a kind of virtue epistemology that, right. that could be had here, right? Yeah, Where, my friend uh, Stephen A. Pierre at uh, Villanova, who's been on my show a couple of times, he's got a whole book on virtue epistemology. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, quite and excellent. I, yeah, yeah, it's quite excellent. It's, it's you know, it's something I've always wanted to get around to exploring, but I just you know, I've not made yet time in my life for epistemology. Um, but but maybe someday. But you see, my point is. Mm -hmm. And I do think there's something to that in that, okay, you know, if you and I are going to argue about whether or not, you know, my, the lawnmower is in the garage where I just locked it up, I, at a certain point, I'm going to say, look, you know, grownups do not really have time. Mm -hmm. There's a certain sense of the real that we, you know, there's a confluence of, 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 of lines of probability that just lead me to not want to entertain that. Right. Yeah. And this, this, for, this for Newman becomes his sort of natural theology in a way. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We should speak of about another guy we should do a series on or just yeah. another. Yeah. Newman would be Newman would be great. Yeah. All right. So that's book six, man. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Excellent. Awesome. Awesome. Um, homework or assignments for the gentle listener before book seven, professor. Mm, I think uh, just as you go into book seven, like, remember, it's not an accident that book six happened first. Right. Because books, book, book seven is pretty tough sledding. There's some complicated debates and there's some puzzles in there. So always read, you know, you know the next chapter in light of the previous, right? There's, this is not accidentally arranged, right? Brilliant. Okay, yep. gentle listeners, thank you as always for tuning in. Uh, be sure to check out the resources that I will link in the descriptions to support your professor here with a pay what you want nihilism course. Yep. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye bye.